Okay, so before we get this video underway, I wanted to give a big shout out over to Tyler Wardy once again. He made a video about the same topic two days before this video's upload. So give all the props, go over, check out his take on it as well, because he's a Rangers guy full time. So he has a little bit of a different perspective than I do towards this player and this overall idea. But Today we're going over a name who is not unfamiliar on this YouTube channel. We're talking today about Vitaly Kravtsov, who was a New York Rangers top draft pick from the 2018 NHL entry draft. He was taken among some notable competition, with guys like Quinn Hughes and Philip Sedina and Adam Boakfist going right before him, and some really notable guys like Evan Bouchard, Oliver Wallstrom, and Noah Dobson going right after him. He was a guy who many people were kind of surprised to see jump up to ninth overall, but he indeed has been a Rangers prospect ever since. The last time we spoke about Vitaly Kravtsov was talking about his overall weird mixed signals he was getting from the New York Rangers and the Hartford Wolfpack. That was a video talking about how there was a little bit of a conflict of interest between what different parties were telling him and what he was believing to be his development path. It's weird. Go check the video out if you hadn't seen it already, but... This video is a little bit of a different flavor because what we're doing in this video is going over another Vitaly Kravtsov interview. This time, though, instead of talking about how he's receiving mixed signals from the Wolf Pack, we're talking about a few different things. Let's go over onto sportexpress.ru because this is the website that does have the interview over here. Take a look at this. We're going to translate it from Russian to English via the Google machine. The title of the article is This Tractor is Surprised by the Words of the SKA Player. It's not really pretty. Vitaly Kravtsov on the team's takeoff, defensive hockey, and a return to the New York Rangers. Now, Traktor, what's that? They're referring to Traktor Chelyabinsk, the hockey team which Vitaly Kravtsov does play for. He's a guy who, in the most recent season of play, saw himself get three points in 11 games played with that squad in a year that was also split between the Hartford Wolfpack and the AHL as well as the VHL too. But in this season's worth of play, 2019-20, with the Traktor Chelyabinsk, Vitaly Kravtsov has 12 points in 23 games played at the time of this recording, and that actually is somewhat of a misguided number, I will say, because Vitaly Kravtsov has only had two points in his most previous 10 games played, so if you take away those two points in 10 games, you have a number of 10 points in 13 games, which is a lot better, and then you take a look at what he did before that, well, he had three points in six games played before that, so if you total everything up, that's five points in 16 games, and if you remove five points in 16 games, he's a point-per-game player at 7.7 .7 games played, alongside what was a four-game goal streak where he had five goals in the process, which is awesome to see. But this article over here on sportexpress.ru goes over a few really interesting things when talking about Vitaly Kravtsov and his overall role with the Rangers. We start off with this. The question is that the New York Rangers do not have any extra roster spots for a winger. They recently reported that they're not going to call you to training camp. How do you feel about this, Vitaly Kravtsov? And he replies, Fine. Since I knew about it for a long time. The club and I had an agreement that I would spend the whole season in Chelyabinsk. Okay, so that's cool. Vitaly Kravtsov is going to spend the entire 2020-2021 season in the KHL, which shouldn't be seen as a bad move. In fact, it should be seen as a good move, because he was really good with this squad earlier on in the year. He's only 20 years old. He's a big 6'4 left-hander on the right wing who knows how to absolutely snipe a puck. He's a very good hockey player in that respect. But then the interview kind of goes into a different direction. They talk about, do you agree on this when you were not used in the final game? We all came to the conclusion that I need playing practice now. I'm not too sure what that's referring to, but if someone wants to let me know in the comments what this is about, I'll be very grateful for that. And then the third question right here in the interview is this right here. I heard that a trade is possible. Even the name of your new club, the Pittsburgh Penguins, came up. And he responds by saying... I can't say anything about this. The interviewer asks, Okay, well, I'll put the question differently. Do you think your future in the North American NHL is going to be with the New York Rangers? I haven't even spoken to my overseas agent for a long time. Now is probably not the time to think about it at all, to discuss something. I have a contract with Tractor until the end of the season. I will deal with the issue of the NHL only after the end of this Tractor Chelyabinsk contract. Oh, man. 
Oh, man. So, out of nowhere, the interviewer comes out here and says, Yeah, man, you're gonna see a trade soon? The Pittsburgh Penguins, eh? Where in the world did that come from? First off, this article is just an interview asking him some questions about his time in the KHL, etc. I have no idea just exactly what the incentive is to go out there when you're interviewing a player and say, hey, so you might get traded soon, eh? How does it feel to be potentially going to the Pittsburgh Penguins? Isn't that just a weird question to ask? Like, I did my two full years of radio education at BCIT. I had a year and a half's worth of journalism, preparation, and education. And when we learn how to interview people, you don't want to ask leading questions like that that insinuate other situations or narratives that could be seen as a big story, either positive or negative. Certainly is negative if you're taking a look at this from the New York Rangers point of view, because what in the world? A former top prospect of ours is getting asked about whether or not he's going to get traded to Pittsburgh? Why even Pittsburgh? What's the connection there? Somebody want to link to me in the comments below where exactly this Penguins connection came from? We're making it known here ourselves in this video with the title, the thumbnail, etc. But that's because the article and the interview question goes over that specific thing. To which Kraftsov says, nah man, I can't talk about that. Then take a look at this. They do ask a little bit more questions about his overall participation, I guess you could say, with the Rangers. You see how many young players are on the New York Rangers. And he replies this, not only young people. Count how many players are in my position on the right wing. There are plenty to choose from. There are no places on paper. And then the rest of the questions, it goes into a very, what, somewhat argumentative kind of tone. They start talking about Vladislav Kamenev, and then they talk about SKA, also talking about how whether or not... Vitaly Kravtsov is unhappy, and he says, still it says on the table it is necessary to look there and only then throw such statements. Then the interviewer says, come on, Vitaly, maybe Kamenev said harshly, there's like a whole bunch of other weird stuff, man. This is kind of similar to what we had initially, because the first video we made about Vitaly Kravtsov talking about the mixed signals, I noted this in that video as well. But these Russian interviews, when you translate it from Russian to English, they're weird. Like, there's an argumentative, somewhat hostile tone coming across in a lot of these questions and a lot of these answers. It's like a conversation where there's somewhat of a problem being discussed here and it's just transcribed and published online. Take a look at this. On one of the websites, material came out in which they are positively evaluating your game, but at the same time, they said that you fall so much on the ice, Vitaly Kravtsov. Why are you falling? Kravtsov replies, do I fall a lot? And the interviewer says, I don't know. It's weird, man. Like, this isn't really the same kind of interviewing style that's done here in North America, at least when it comes to public media, hockey player interviews. So definitely there is some different flavor here. For sure, I have no idea where this Pittsburgh Penguins thing came out of, and this is also a point that was mentioned in Tyler Wardy's video as well, but there's no trade with the Penguins that actually makes any sense here, because if you're taking a look at what the Penguins have that the Rangers would want, hey, it's center depth, but like, come on, you're not getting rid of any of your top centers for Vitaly Kravtsov, of all people. It's not even like a prospect would work, too. Take a look at the Penguins' prospect center depth. Like, none of these guys are guys that you could even think about justifying in a Kraftsoft trade. Justin Almeida, Frederick Gaudreau, Anthony Angelo, ooh, okay, what about Liam Gorman? Yeah, it doesn't work like that. And if you're looking for anything else, okay, wingers, well, the Rangers kind of got wingers, and defensemen, hey, the Rangers kind of have defensemen too. We know the Rangers are looking towards the future more than anything, so they would probably want a young piece back. It's not like they would be trading a Vitaly Kravtsov for a Crosby or whatever because, oh, they want to make the playoffs now and they want to win now. No, that's not really the plan here. So I'm more dumbfounded just seeing the mere mentioning of a Penguins trade as much as I'm dumbfounded in seeing the overall interview style that goes on in this article, which I'll leave a link down in the description to because it's just such a weird read, and I recommend anybody go out there and do it, but that wraps up our video here today on Vitaly Kravtsov talking about the trade rumors, the weird relocation rumors, and whether or not he's actually going to play for the Rangers in general because he says there's no spots on the team available in his position. Man, we'll see where things go from here, but it's a very, very weird story. It was a weird story before with the mixed signals thing. It's even weirder now after reading that article. So talk to me in the comments what you think. Check out Tyler Wardy's video on this perspective as well from a Rangers fan. Hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.